Today on Ag Etc., Dwayne Taves is reporting from the Three Eye Show in Dodge City, where we learn about the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism's Walk-In Hunting Access Program. Then we get an update from the National Weather Service, and George and LaDonna Brown talk about the liquidation of their antique tractors to make room for more projects. Next is this week's Angus Report, and we'll end with Dr. Chris Blevins and Dr. Dylan Lutter discussing colic surgery. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agaminkansas.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Dwayne Thames joining you once again on Ag AM in Kansas and a chance to catch up with Aaron Baugh with Kansas Wildlife Parks and Tourism. And Aaron, uh, one of the popular programs that Wildlife and Parks for a number of years has been involved in. And really it serves a kind of two purposes uh, for both the enthusiast and sportsman, but the landowner as well, the Walk-In Wildlife Hunting Program. Talk to us a little bit about that program and how it works. Yeah, uh, the walk-in program is where we lease private uh, property for public access. There we have several different uh, side shoots offsets of that program where we can give either long-term leases for up to 10 years there when it's on an all-up-front payment, or we do more of an annual lease there, and the, the landowner gets a payment uh, every year there. So... There's several different aspects to the program and we've really kind of tailored it to, to best suit the, the landowner out there. Now obviously there are differences uh, from across the state from east to west and, and what might be a, a good hunting ground in one area of the state, uh, maybe not in, in another, but it allows uh, producers uh, to gain some revenue off those acres but at the same time uh, continue to support a program and, uh, and an opportunity for those maybe in urban areas that don't have hunting acres contracted that they can enjoy the outdoors as well. Yeah, that's right. And it really uh, works well for absentee landowners uh, that can't be out there on their property and, and keep a close eye on it. Uh, our properties are patrolled by our game wardens out there and so uh, and then we also have liability coverage on those properties so the landowners protected from, by that aspect as well there so it it works out uh, across the state for for a different uh, variety of landowners there whether if you're on the property there and just uh, but, but don't have the time to manage it and want to get, get a little extra money off of it uh, works out for them and then it works out for those absentee landowners as well we think about uh, other offshoots from that program. I think there's a fishing program as well. Yeah, there's the, the fish access where uh, we lease uh, ponds there for public access. And then we all, the biologists uh, a lot of times will stock those ponds too to maybe bump up the fish numbers there for uh, the fishing out there too. Well, our thanks to Aaron Baugh joining us on Ag Aim in Kansas, talking about the wildlife uh, or walk-in hunting program. If they have more information, is the easiest way to just to go to the website? Yeah, you can go to ksoutdoors.com or just type in uh, Kansas Wildlife and Parks and Tourism on any of the search browsers, and you'll get to our website there. Or you can uh, call one of the local offices in your area and, and talk to to them there and get more information on the program. Soil is the life of a farm. And for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This is Eric Stone Street, and as many of you know, I love my home state of Kansas. In March, Kansas ranchers lost homes, equipment, and thousands of cattle from the largest wildfires in the state's history. Imagine losing all you have in a fire. Not just your house, but your livelihood. Ranchers are beginning to rebuild, but it will take years and tens of millions of dollars 
to build back herds, fences, and other infrastructure. Today I'm asking you to help. Donate what you can and show your support to the ranchers of Kansas. Simply go to kansasfires.com. Your donation is tax deductible and will go to those who need it the most. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Dwayne Thames joining you once again here on uh, Ag AM in Kansas. And I can't check up with uh, the National Weather Service. And, Larry, uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the things the National Weather Service does that most folks probably don't have any idea. We're responsible for forecasting and putting out warnings for a part of Kansas, and in our case we do southwestern Kansas, but the National Weather Service in total is tasked with putting out forecasts and warnings for the entire United States. We put out gridded forecasts with a 2.5 kilometer resolution, so if you go on the map with the weather.gov and click on a location, we can get a seven-day forecast for your location with as much detail as you'd like to see. And the quality of the forecast is much better than it used to be a number of years ago. Uh, when I started in this agency almost 40 years ago, we were looking at a five levels of the atmosphere and we were forecasting out with discrete steps of 12 hours in the future. Now we're forecasting out in time steps in some cases with our high resolution models 15 minutes in the future and trying to forecast actual thunderstorm development on the numerical models. So we've come a long ways in the last uh, 40 years or so and uh, the quality of, of forecast and warnings that people get now is far superior and we hope that we can provide something that will affect uh, and provide the opportunity to protect life and property. Our whole goal in the Weather Service is the Weather Ready Nation program is to reduce the Im- adverse impact of the meteorology or weather on people's economic development as well as their personal safety. We think about uh, the varied climate that we have here in the central part of the country. It really doesn't matter what the season is, there's potential for severe weather of some sort. Absolutely. You may recall last uh, Christmas Day, we had seven tornadoes in southwestern Kansas along a squall line. So attempting to forecast that type of thing can be very challenging. One thing we do to help people to prepare for that is to do storm spotter training sessions every year. And in the spring of the season, before we get into so- into the severe weather season, we will go out and provide a spotter training class in every county in southwestern Kansas. So if anybody's interested in the weather, he can come out to one of those spotter training classes and learn what he should be looking for. And here at the Three I Show, one thing that we're doing is have we have a Van de Graaff generator that simulates what happens with you see the lightning discharge in the atmosphere so we can simulate the electric field that you can feel if you have some, a thunderstorm developing overhead, your hair starts to stand on end, or you start to feel tingling on your flesh. We can demonstrate that here and that lets you know you're in a bad place for a lightning strike. Talk a little bit about uh, how individuals can work in cooperation. I know the COCO RAW is uh, uh, an acronym for a, a, an opportunity to really be a part of the National Weather Service on a local level. Now, the COCO RAW network is an all volunteer network. Uh, if you have a uh, computer with access to the internet, we provide rain gauges. If you t- for, collect the rainfall reports and enter your data o- online, then there's a very nice network of rainfall that comes out. And we estimate rainfall with radar, but the ground truth is all important for how well the radar is calibrated. Sometimes it works really well, other times not so well. But with the Kokoros network, you send your reports in, and then you can look at all the reports all around the United States. Actually, there's some Kokoros observations in, in other countries as well. So you can look and see what the rainfall distribution was in another county or another state and really get a good idea of what the atmosphere has done. And you talk about that opportunity to get uh, reliable data on the ground uh, that the National Weather Service then uses when we look at calibrating a radar and, and really trying to get a good grip on what those storms are actually producing. And another really important thing that you can do for us is to provide reports. If you have hail high winds, if you see tornadoes, something unusual, please call us and let us know if you'd be willing to serve as a spotter and let us call you when we see something in your area. That's absolutely important because those data are used to create a national database called Storm Data and insurance agents use that if they're evaluating claims that people could put in. If we have no reports of anything, the company may use that as a reason to refuse not to refuse the claim. So knowing what happens under thunderstorm with all the technology, we know what should be happening, but the human report is all important to us as well. 
Are your cows practical or profitable? If you want them to be both, then come to the Dale Banks Angus Bull Sale Saturday, November 18th near Eureka, Kansas. Selling 130 hard-working, balanced, straight bulls developed in the rugged Flint Hills. For 113 years, the Perriers have been providing practical, profitable genetics to cattlemen nationwide. Join us November 18th or bid online at liveauctions.tv. Call the Perriers at 620-583-4305 or dalebanks.com. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses and rodeos, and my shoulders took such a beating, and that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery, and so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95 percent of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months and I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights. I can throw. I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. So I'm, I'm tickled to death with the results and I'd recommend this process to anyone. I'm Rex Ann Strew, veterinarian in Western Iowa. I have a veterinary clinic and uh, started doing stem cell therapy on dogs in August of 2014. And after the first two dogs, after three weeks, I saw such dramatic results, I said, hey, I have arthritis, I have joints, really need this help. Where can I go to get this done? I had stem cell therapy done in November of 2014 on my finger joints, my hip, and the ball of my left foot, uh, all of which I'd had real severe problems with. Saw a pretty dramatic uh, improvement in a short amount of time. I would certainly recommend that somebody don't wait until I'm in the position that I was in with the d damage already done to my joints. I encourage veterinarians to use it for their animals and I encourage anybody who sees this video, if you have need, get in contact with these people because this is a phenomenal place to have this done. This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Dwayne Thames joining you once again here on Ag AM in Kansas and a chance to catch up with George Brown and uh, his wife LaDonna. George, you've got uh, quite a lineup of uh, antique tractors that you've put a lot of heart and soul in. What piqued your interest in, in restoring tractors uh, back to their original fabrication? Oh, I suppose when I was a kid, I was raised on them, and you get to thinking about yesterday, and you just like to, I got started in it and got a tractor fever. Now it's getting over with. <laughs> Talk a little bit about uh, some of your favorites in your lineup here. You've got a great, uh, a great lineup of, of John Deere's, a few Case IH that you've done as well. Uh, that uh, that you're going to liquidate at auction, but it's an, uh, a really a lifetime of work that took to put this group together. Yeah, right. At, we've been at it right at 21 and a half, 20, 22 years, and I think our D started it, and uh, I've run the D a long time when I was a kid, and then we got the R John Deere in the 830s, and a few of the A's and G's in between to chop feed with and collivate, and we got to collecting and we didn't know when to stop and now we're running out of room and we're going to hopefully sell some so we can start over. Well that's optimistic uh, when you think about uh, starting over. Most people at your age uh, thinking about uh, taking it easy but uh, it sounds like for somebody that gets tractor fever that probably isn't happening until we uh, until we part ways with this earth. That's right. Uh, I'm afraid taking it easy a person might croak stay doing what I'm doing and she enjoys it just as much as I do she comes out the shop and helps me and she's my top mechanic and uh, believe me she's good at it and like I say we're running out of shop uh, storage space for them and we hope today we, we make other people happy and take these tractors to a good homes all we're hoping for and uh, maybe we can get part of our parts back that we've got in them, and that's about all I know. 
Well, talk a little bit about uh, finding parts. Obviously, you're working with, with antique tractors that, uh, for the most part, are not in, certainly not in production and not much use anymore either. Is it hard to get that accomplished? Uh, some, but not, not bad. Uh, we buy a lot of parts from Indiana, and we buy them from out at Washington, which the freight is kind of high, and uh, Wisconsin. And here in Kansas, there's a place, these are Hutchison, we buy, and I can get about anything they need. Well, our thanks to George and LaDonna Brown uh, joining us here on uh, Ag AM in Kansas, sharing their fine collection of antique tractors that they liquidated this year, making a little room in the shop. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Cattle feeder Todd Wilkinson has a specific animal type in mind when he fills his pens. It's based on what he wants to market to the packer. I buy probably 90% of our cattle right off the ranch. So I'm looking for an animal that's going to perform, that's going to have the ability to let me hit the April market, for instance, with that fall calf that I'm going to pick up uh, here in just a few weeks. And, and I'm looking for an animal that's got uh, great genetics that can make me hit a premium. I, I need to hit that uh, choice and prime uh, in the CABs because that's the program our operation is in. The easiest way to get those kind of cattle in his yard is to work on repeat suppliers. We've had relationship with ranchers for many, many years. And because of that, I know the genetics, um, they, they know our shot protocol. So we know um, with our ranchers, we work out a program as to what preconditioning program they're going to have and then what we expect um, out of the delivery, and then all the way into the background yards where we go through the same protocols. We try to keep consistent so we can keep our product consistent. The family works with nine backgrounding yards to get the calves ready for the feed yard, and they track them all the way through. Final carcass and performance data is shared back with the producers. It's one of the reasons that a lot of ranchers like to do business with our operation is because they, they can determine if their bull power needs to be adjusted, if, if, their, if their calves aren't uh, what we're looking for. So they're looking for that feedback to build their herd. Uh, and when they improve their herd, they're improving our finished product. So it's kind of a synergy there, works very well between our operation and a lot of the ranchers. That teamwork improves the cattle and those relationships. A lot of them really want to know because they never get to hear it. You know, it, they take and sell that animal. They don't know what happens. Uh, and they'd like to know what their uh, efficiencies are, what the rate of gain is, um, you know, just how that animal is performing. Everybody is more profitable when everybody has their eye on the end goal. I'm Bob Cervera. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. 
Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hello and welcome to Horsing Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. Today, joined by Dr. Dylan Luter. Uh, he is a board certified surgeon here in large animal at Kansas State and assistant professor and does a lot of the emergency uh, work here at the, at the vet school, so welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I think that uh, something that's always important to go through that a lot of horse owners, you know, they're very leery about is colic surgery, or if a horse would need to go to colic surgery, some maybe misperceptions of that or just being comfortable with that situation and, and potential options for that. So could you go through um, kind of if an owner or even that referring veterinarian is getting ready to potentially refer maybe to you in, at night or uh, even during the day, when is the best time to try to figure out when surgery may be a needed option? Sure, Chris. Uh, that's a very common question we get and a lot of people have a perception that uh, the colic is really bad. It, it, may not be worth going to surgery and uh, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is uh, the sooner that we can get the horse here the better. Uh, once it sort of becomes evident that uh, this is not just a routine run-of-the-mill colic that one vet visit uh, isn't going to take care of. And with that and, and as you move forward, um, what are some different like colics that happen and you don't have to go through the whole gamut maybe just a few of the more common ones that, that are on the surgery table that you've uh, been dealing with here at Kansas State. Sure uh, well certainly the most common one that we see uh, here are large colon impactions or displacements so basically the feed material in the colon uh, becomes really dry and it just gets stuck in there or the colon moves to the wrong spot mm -hmm. um, that's one of the most common that we see here and then the other aspect would be uh, a large colon or a small colon twist where something twists and cuts off the blood supply and then we may need to go in and, and take that part out. So. And I think that's something where too some uh, owners think well if you take out part of the bowel that horse isn't going to do well. What's the aspect when you have that conversation maybe there's devitalized small intestine or large intestine. What is that kind of uh, communication with the owner dependent sure. on I guess. Sure it is uh, situation dependent but um, you know a lot of times uh, we look at how sick the horse is uh, before going to surgery and try to get an estimate of what sort of complications might occur because that can really affect how the horse does after surgery. Uh, but if the horse is relatively stable and um, we're able to take the, the devitalized piece out, um, actually up around 70 to 75 percent of horses, depending on the procedure we do, sometimes it's less than that, uh, can actually go back to doing what they're doing and go back to being normal horses. So it, it is definitely a worthwhile procedure. I think that's stuff that uh, owners need to remember is just because they're going to go to surgery doesn't mean they're going to have a life-changing uh, situation where they can't go back to. It all depends on the colic, obviously, but uh, success rate uh, can be fairly good and it's definitely better than just a 50-50 chance. Oh, definitely. Well, and especially for the, the displacements and impactions that I mentioned, uh, that can be up uh, greater than 90% chance. So uh, it's worth, worth having that in mind. Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Luter, and, and giving us the information on colics and colic surgeries. And I guess if people uh, have a horse that's uh, needing colic surgery, you know, you'd be talking to one of the surgeons here at the vet school, maybe even uh, Dr. Luter. But it's one of those things where uh, we're here if you ever need us. That's right. We're here. Feel free to give us a call. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Luter. Thank you. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins for Horsing Around, and we'll see you around. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow.
Learn more at agpromosource.com.